Making hit songs is every artist's dream. Whether their songs becomes a radio smash or going viral online, this is a huge win for the artist as getting a hit can set them up for a long and memorable career. But sometimes the unthinkable happens and the artist becomes forgotten over time. Meanwhile, their songs outlive them as they, the artist, becomes irrelevant to completely being forgotten. It's a very peculiar situation. It's like their music is larger than life and they don't have the star power to handle it. It's like like the song just swallows them whole. Gobble, 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 gobble. As most of us know, it's crucial for debuting artists or even seasoned artists to produce or perform music that can sustain them without overshadowing them as an artist. A song that will take them to the next level, not for the song to surpass them where the artist just can't keep up. Remember Rihanna's debut single, Ponder Replay, released in 2005? Well, Jay-Z, who's one of the main persons that put her on in the music industry, was skeptical of the track as he thought the song would be too much for her to handle. She walked into the office and, you know, I heard the record and I was really afraid of the record. It was so big that I thought the record would be bigger than her. Right. I thought the record, she would be the pond to replay girl. Forever. Yeah. Fortunately for Re, she owned that song and it propelled her perfectly to her next single. Hello everyone, Don here, your pop culture boy. And for this video, I'll go down the rabbit hole of forgotten artists that made iconic music. Mario Wynaz. If you're wondering who Mario Wynaz is, you probably know him, you just probably forgot about him. Mario is a singer, songwriter, and producer that got mainstream attention in the early 2000s, who's popularly known for singing I Don't Wanna Know, released in 2004. I Don't Wanna Know samples 1987's Bodosia by Irish singer Enya. And if you're also wondering, hmm, I've heard that sound in another song before. Yes, the sound was also sampled by Fuji's 1996 hit single, Ready or Not. And in 2022, The Weeknd covered the track on Metro Booming's Creeping. Released under Bad Boy, owned by Brother I'll Steal All Your Publishing and Trap You in a Recording Deal and Have You Looking for BBCs on the Internet, allegedly. Dirty Diddy also had a verse on the song. Anyway, the song I Don't Wanna Know was a huge hit back in the day. Its moody and spellbound vibe still sounds modern to this day. I Don't Wanna Know peaked number two on the US Billboard Hot 100 for eight weeks. The track was blocked from reaching number one by Usher's Yeah and Burn, respectively. Throughout Mario's career as a singer, he released two studio albums, Story of My Heart, released in 1997, his debut. His debut wasn't a commercial success, while his second studio album, Hurt Me More, peaked number two on the Billboard 200 and sold 223,000 copies in its first week. After releasing I Don't Wanna Know from his final album, his other singles that followed as a lead artist didn't perform to a high standard. Now, if you're wondering what happened to Mario after his success as an artist, let's get into that. In 2016, Mario Wynas pled guilty to tax evasion in a New Jersey courtroom. Prosecutors say he earned more than $2.8 million during the years he didn't file his tax returns. He was ordered to pay the IRS more than $400,000. During the case, an attorney for Wynas said he understands he made a mistake and wants to make things right. Mario initially faced up to two years in federal prison for failing to file his tax returns. Instead of prison time, Judge Salas said sentenced him to five years probation, 500 hours of community service at a boys music school in Newark, pay $434,968 in restitution, and seek mental health treatment. Lord, During the two-hour hearing, the court heard how Wynaz was already struggling to pay his bills, besides owing $178,000 in child support, and that he was two months behind on his $6,200 a month rent on his $1.4 million home 
in Fort Lee, had trouble paying his legal fees for the case, and resorted to borrowing large sums of money from his mother in order to stay afloat. Now I know, sounds awful, but despite all of that, it does seem like he is trying to change his ways, you know, trying to do better, and he is still a high demand producer today. Before sister duo Chloe X Halley, we had Brick and Lace. I know that's kind of a stretch because they are completely different music wise, but for the sake of this video, that's what I'm going with. In the mid to late 2000s, we had a lot of dancehall artists hitting the mainstream, including the sister duo Brick and Lace, who gained worldwide attention from their song Love is Wicked. <laughs> Brick and Lace are a Jamaican dancehall music duo consisting of sisters Nyanda and Nyla. The duo's music is a mix of dancehall and R&B, and originally they were a trio with their third sister Tasha. The duo signed a deal with Akon's record label Con Live Distribution and released their single Love Is Wicked on July 20th, 2007 off their only debut studio album of the same name to a limited release that same year, where it was further released in 2008 and 2009 in European territories. Although Love Is Wicked was released in 2007, a lot of people including myself have also thought it wasn't the original version and after doing some more research, I was able to find the original version which was released in 2004. The 2004 version is more on par with the instrumentals or the rhythm for the Diwali rhythm, which I made a video about back when I just started making videos on YouTube. The official version sounds like the rhythm was recreated using a more natural sounding instrument, and I've always felt like it sounds a lot more tame when compared to the 2004 version, which was played a lot on the radio. I still like that version more because it sounds a lot more authentic. <laughs> Since the duo released their debut studio album in 2007, they have stated multiple times that they are working on their second album, which is yet to be released. In 2013, the sisters disbanded to find themselves outside of Brick and Lace. While they were on break, they released solo singles and work with other artists before getting back together a year later. Today, Brick and Lace still release music, and it's been 16 years since Love Is Wicked was released, and despite Brick and Lace not becoming a household name, that's okay, as Love Is Wicked is still widely played today. Jay Holiday. He was a well-known R&B singer in the mid to late 2000s that quietly faded as that decade came to a close. Born in Washington, D.C., he was influenced by the go-go sound. While growing up, his mother made sure he attended church. Jay Holiday would sing at showcases in high school, and it fueled him to pursue a music career. Jay Holiday was in a group, they tried getting signed, but people would always say they aren't looking for groups, and that they will only take interest if he went solo. Jay Holiday signed a deal with Capitol Records in 2006. His breakthrough was a slow burn as his debut single Be With Me released in October 31st, 2006 failed to crack the US Hot 100. Also during that time, Capitol had some disruptions as it was merging with Virgin Records, so it wasn't promoted. But the second single, Bed, released in June 2007, put him on the map. Written by The Dream, Bed was originally to be recorded by Chris Brown, but after it was given to Jay Holiday, Chris wanted to at least be featured on the track, as he said the track wouldn't have a chance of going number one without him. Bed debuted on the US Billboard Hot 100 at number 89 and peaked at number 5. The song also went number one on the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart, and it stayed there for five weeks at number one. Jay Holiday's debut studio album was released in October 2007. Back of My Lack. The project debuted at number 5 on the Billboard 200, selling 105,000 copies in its first week. When it came time to release Jay Holiday's second studio album, Round 2, which came out in 2009 after the release of the lead and only single off the album, I'm Yours, which came out the previous year, in an interview with BET, Jay Holiday revealed that they didn't want to support the project because he and the label didn't see eye to eye. Also, the label refusing to fund the photo shoot for the album, causing him to fund on the shoot himself. Round 2 sold 55,000 copies in its first week and debuted at number 4 on the Billboard 200. 
After 2009, you didn't hear much about the R&B singer, as his third studio album got shelved after signing with Def Jam in 2010. In 2014, he finally released his third studio album, Guilty Conscience, through his own label, HMG, marking his first independent release, but uh, nobody listened to it. Then in 2018, out of nowhere, the singer would release a video on the internet calling out SZA, Beyonce, and Cardi B for putting out music that attacked black men and getting nominated at the Grammys for said music. So apparently, man, the black men still losing to the women. I get it. No disrespect. I was raised by a woman. I have two older sisters, man. I have absolute all respect for black women. But with that being said, understand this, man. Black men, African-American men, Men from the hood, we go through everything to make sure that who we care about are taken care of. We don't swing our dicks around. Um, we don't. We don't. We don't do all this bullshit to be seen. I could be that nigga over here, niggas up. I know a whole bunch of little bitch ass niggas that sing that I could call their ass the fuck out, but I don't. And understand this, I got daughters, man. Cardi, Beyonce, SZA. All y'all motherfuckers, stop using that fucking pain to make it okay to say some bullshit on your record and get nominated for a Grammy for going through some bullshit. Because so have I, as a black mother. Now, at the time, lots of people, including myself, was like, Jay Holiday, is that you? I know that ain't who I think it is. And recently, the artist also went viral while performing on stage for looking like this. Anyways, so people are roasting him in the comment section on the shade room. People are asking why he's he built like that, saying he's getting old, and other fucked up comments. Me personally, I wasn't shocked or surprised as the man is almost 40. And yes, granted, not all 40 year olds look like this. He looks normal to me. Meanwhile, if you check out some of the people in the comment section's pages, they look the exact same or worse. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the comments were funny as fuck, but some of them were just stupid because some of these people in the comment sections, they have uncles, dads, brothers, mothers, cousins that look just like Jay Holiday. Jay Sean. Jay Sean was a hit maker in his prime and one of the most successful artists in the late 2000s. Prior to signing with Cash Money Records by Your Republic in 2008, he was putting out music since the early 2000s in his native UK. Jay Sean was in a collective called the Richie Rich Project, formed by Richie Rich, a British Indian music producer based in London. They subsequently found success in India and helped popularize Asian R&B fusion sound in both Asian underground scene and in Indian pop music. While under guidance of Richie Rich, Jay Sean released his debut studio album, Me Against Myself, in the UK on November 8, 2004. The album received universal acclaim from critics and was a success in India and the UK. His second studio project, My Own Way, released in 2008, wasn't as successful, but it managed to score Sean a hit with the single, Write It. Then... Everything changed in 2009 when Jay Sean released the track, Down, featuring Lil Wayne, becoming a staple in my life as a child. Baby, are you down, 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 down? The track peaked number one on the Hot 100, making Jay Sean the first British artist to top the Hot 100 since Freddie Mercury in 1980 and the first solo artist of Asian descent to do so. The track also sold more than 6 million copies in the US. Jay Sean's next single, Do You Remember, was also successful. After that, Jay Sean released a number of singles that didn't do much for his career. The song still had that super pop dance sound that was getting tired at that point, with releases like the 2010 2012 It Ain't the End featuring Nicki Minaj and 2011 Hit the Lights which featured Lil Wayne and the songs weren't bad but they didn't do much for his career. They were way too hollow in my opinion. Following this, Jay Sean hasn't really made another hit song until one of his older tracks, Write It, released in 2008, was reworked by DJ Regard, which became a viral hit on TikTok in 2019. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this topic in the comments and let me know if you would like a part two. So if you want a part two, also like the video and leave a comment because I initially wanted to feature 10 different artists, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stop here. I had this artist and that artist, but let me know if you want part two. Also subscribe to the channel and oh, follow me on Instagram at one Don Angelo. You know, it's free to follow me over there where you can DM me and keep up with me off of YouTube. I know it's a little bit chaotic on my Instagram, but while I figure out my aesthetics, I'll be posting whatever I want. Hopefully this video comes out before 2024. So yeah, I hope 2024 is a great year for everyone. And I hope everyone stay focused and get what they want in 2024. Whatever you didn't get in 2023, get that in 2024. Anyways, I'm Don, your pop culture boy, and I will see you in the next one.